Hey everybody, welcome to this week's episode of Ant on Music. I'm your host, Ant. And this week we're going to be taking a look at uh, several different subgenres of, uh, of heavy metal. Um, so it was an interesting week, um, you know, as far as releases go. So everything I have this week for you uh, was either some sort of find out shopping or uh, it was something that was planned. But everything is a, a re-release and there's a lot of colorful vinyl in there. Uh, first thing we're going to start off with before uh, before we get into all the music stuff, is going to ask you three things I always ask you to do. Most importantly, hit the subscribe button. Uh, second thing, you know, click like, give a thumbs up, man. Appreciate those. And if you feel like doing it, drop a comment. Is there some band you'd like me to see me do something about, um, you know, do a show on or uh, something in the, that I might possibly have in my collection or any questions you might have uh, about you know, the, the collection that I do have. Um, so let's hop into it right away. Uh, you know, you're going to click that subscribe button. Do it now. Do it. Do it. Uh, and we're going to start off with probably the lightest part of this. And this is one of the, uh, I would say, the big four, one of the big four hair metal bands. Uh, and they're still out there touring. But this was kind of a, a, a sidestep album for them. Uh, this just came out for the first time on vinyl. And that is... Native Tongue by Poison. Okay, this is the only album, all right, as you see there, this is the only album that does not have C.C. DeVille on it, all right? Uh, this album, they uh, went a different route. Uh, apparently, um, C.C. was having some issues uh, with, you know, various partying substances, and uh, he wasn't, quote-unquote, up to par to be on the record. So what did they do? They went out and they hired a guitar slinger by the name of Richie Kotzen. Uh, you may know him. Uh, he's gone on to do work with uh, Adrian Smith of Iron Maiden. So pretty, you know, pretty well-accomplished player. And they ditched, like, all the really upbeat party stuff that they're known for. Um, and they tried to get some respectability. Well, you know, they did put out a pretty good album. And, you know, Native Tongue is a, is a fine album. It's very different. It's the only album in the Poison catalog um, that sounds like this. Uh, give you a look inside. You know, you've got your lyrics and liner notes there. The albums themselves are, you know, they're basic black and the sleeves are just plain white. So, you know, nothing, nothing really to see there. Uh, as far as the track listing goes, the stuff that stands out to me, uh, the big track from this was Stand. You know, that was a that was a great track. That's track three on this. Uh, you also had the title track, uh, Native Tongue and the Scream. So Native Tongue, the Scream and Stand uh, kicks off the album pretty well. Uh, and then the other big song on here was Until You Suffer Some, Fire and Ice. And what was cool was with this, they even put uh, on here the uh, couple of bonus tracks. Uh, they put on Stand, uh, the acoustic version, uh, Whip Comes Down, and uh, Until You Suffer Some Fire and Ice, the ice mix. Uh, in addition to that, you have a pretty neat little, uh, you know, under a minute uh, guitar solo from Richie Kotzen called Richie's Acoustic Things, and uh, Seven Days Over You. So they went more with, you know, ballads on this album. Um, and they also had Theater of the Soul and, and Blind Faith. Uh, you know, not to be confused with Blind Faith by Warrant, but still, uh, pretty fine album. Glad that they put it on vinyl. You know, really cool. You know, add that one to uh, to my ever growing collection. Uh, I have the original on CD. I have the, uh, the the CD single which has those bonus tracks on them. Uh, so, like I said, very different album for Poison. Uh, and you know, the odd thing is. Um, Richie only did the one album with them, and the reason being was he got caught screwing around with Ricky Rocket's girlfriend. And considering Ricky's a founding member of the band and, you know, basically Brett Michaels' best friend, that didn't bode well, so they gave him a swift kick in the ass and told him to hit the pavement. So that was the end of uh, Richie Kotzen's ride on the uh, Poison Mobile. Next thing we have, you know, as if you've watched any of these episodes in the past, uh, there's always some hints as to what's going on. Usually the t-shirts won. Uh, albums in the back, like you can see back there. You got uh, Hanoi Rocks um, back there. This was the first post Hanoi Rocks album where Mike Monroe teamed up with uh, his former bandmate on bass, Sammy Yaffa, and also two new guns, Jimmy Clark and... Um, 
Jay Henning, and Jay Henning has since passed away. Uh, this, you know, it should have been a Mike Monroe solo album, but it ended up becoming Demolition 23, um, which for some reason escapes me, but I know it is from, the, the band name came from a, from a novel. Uh, I want to say William S. Burroughs, I believe it was uh, Exterminator, or uh, that was the name of it, and Demolition 23 is in there. Uh, Needless to say, you know, this is a pretty cool looking album there. You got your gatefold sleeve. Take a look at the back as well. And this is very, uh, you know, very punky type of album. You know, it's like uh, less on the glam end of things and more on the punk end of things. Um, kicks off with Nothing's All Right. Great song. Hammersmith Palais. Uh, the Scum Lives On, which is a, you know, a, basically a political tune. Basically how, you know, people like Stiff Batters and uh, also um, uh, Johnny Thunders, you know, passed away. But somehow the scum in politics lives on. Very, very appropriate today in this day and age. Uh, dysfunctional, ain't nothing to do. I want to be loved. You're crucified. Uh, you crucified me. Uh, same shit, different day. Uh, Endangered Species and Dead Time Stories. Really solid effort from Mike Monroe and crew on this one. If you've never heard it. You know, definitely pick it up. It's got uh, a very, you know, New York punk type of feel to it. And that's the, you know, Mike Monroe is friends with the guys I mentioned earlier with Stiff and, and Johnny. And uh, it really comes through on this album. So this one is colored. So we'll take a peek at that also at the sleeve. So it's a single vinyl LP. It's not very long, uh, but it is really a good album. Let's try and squeeze this out there we go pretty cool spatter you know pad in there with black and a little white in there as well um like i said if you ever see this out and about you may want to pick it up if you're a, a mike monroe guy like i am um definitely worth picking up uh if you go back to an earlier episode where i talk about uh hanoi rocks and mike monroe uh, i'm talking about when i interviewed him and i still stand by the fact that he is the nicest gentleman in rock and roll, period. Uh, big ups to Mike Monroe and Sammy and crew. Uh, next up, this was one where I didn't, you know, somehow, I don't know how the hell I missed this because I, you know, I don't have it on CD. I didn't even know it came out. Uh, and show you the hype sticker. Doesn't give anything away, just tells you that it's on Atomic Fire Records and it's limited edition. Uh, and this is um, German heavy metal band. Uh, you know, you could say they're like uh, progressive power metal. And I'm talking about the pumpkins from the other side of the pond, not the smashing pumpkins we have here, but the guys in Halloween. Uh, and always dug Halloween going all the way back to Keeper of the Seven Keys when I discovered them uh, in the early 80s. And I've always uh, kept up with them. And that's what really trips me out. How the hell did I miss this album when it came out? It's called My God-Given Right. As you can see, you've got the Statue of Liberty there. And you've got their famous mascot on the back. And, you know, this album has, uh, you know, some good tracks, some not so good tracks. Uh, if you're a completist, you know, definitely worth picking up. Um, I'll show you the uh, gatefold as well as the inserts. So you've got the gatefold there with the entire band. You know, and the band on this album was uh, Michael Wyketh, Andy Darris on vocals, uh, Marcus Groskopf, uh, Sasha Gersten, and Dan Danny LaBelle. Uh, and it's a pretty solid album, you know, for the Pumpkins at this stage of the game. I mean, they put out a bunch of them. Uh, first two tracks are probably the best, Heroes and Battles 1. My God, give them right, the uh, title track's okay. And then from there, it kind of ebbs and flows. There's nothing really uh, spectacular till you get to the second slab of vinyl. And probably the best track on both sides of that is Creatures in Heaven. Um, as far as the inserts go, I'll show you those as well. So, you know, you've got your lyrics and liner notes, everything in there, you know, the artwork that goes along with it, okay? Uh, as far as the vinyl itself, this is like a clear with like smoke and black in there. And of course you see 
the pumpkin that they're known for right there. And, uh, you know, like I said, if you're complete, it's definitely, it's, this is not a must get. Uh, you know, it's not a new album. It came out almost 10 years ago. And I just happened to find it on vinyl in this, uh, you know, colored edition with, um, you know, You know, with, with the stuff that's uh, on here, you know, very nice packaging job on it. Uh, probably the packaging is better than the album. But, you know, I'm a Pumpkins fan, so I, I picked it up. And like I said, I sometimes I wonder how stuff escapes me. This is one of them. Next up, this one I was really looking forward to. Uh, this is one of my favorite bands to ever emerge from New York. Um, they started off uh, with Petrius Steel coming, or, coming uh, from... The band Carnivore, who I totally dig. Uh, if you've never heard of them, go and try and listen to Jack, Jack Daniels and Pizza. Uh, the coolest thing about Typo Negative uh, was that they had a really great sense of humor about themselves. They didn't take themselves way too seriously like other bands do. Uh, you know, whereas Halloween, you know, Halloween has a sense of humor as well. They're more straightforward. Um, Typo Negative definitely had had a very bizarre sense of humor about them uh very cool guys um and they had uh they had their first couple albums really didn't break on through but this one did uh this was the one that uh that set them through and it's called bloody kisses now this is the anniversary edition and this is a little different than the uh than the original version, all right? This is known as Bloody Kisses Suspended in Dusk. Um, the original cover has the same two models on it, but it is a different photo from this session. Uh, whereas on the original, it was kind of more like uh, veiled lesbianism. This is like straight up, you get the idea. There's no, no hiding it. On the back, you know, typical of all the uh, typo negative artwork, you know, very goth that's you know that's that's what they uh that's what they traded in and unfortunately pete still has passed you know these guys are from brooklyn uh and i had the opportunity to see them several times uh i think one of the more um memorable times was when my wife and i went to see them we were dating maybe I want to say two to three weeks and we went to see one of their halloween shows uh at life in new york city uh, which was a club downstairs in the village. Uh, she had no idea what was going on. And she was horrified because with their Halloween shows, they came out in like corpse paint and the whole crowd was really into it. And they were like, you know, chanting, you suck, which is one of the things uh, along with Primus that the uh, typo negative fans chant. Uh, and, um, you know, throwing toilet paper at the end of the show. It was just, it was nuts. And it was a bit too much for my wife, but uh, God bless her, she, she sat through it, you know give her all the credit in the world so take a look at the interior of this and you know it's basic interior as far as the vinyl goes you know i mean as far as the the sleeves go uh but as with all things that are typo gotta have your glowing green vinyl there with the lips from bloody kisses right there and what makes this unique is they, you know, aside from the remastering of it, it's being the 30th anniversary, uh, is that they, you know, basically shuffle the tracks. You know, they, they put them in a different order. So, you know, everything that was there is here. It's just not the way it was laid out originally. You have, uh, you know, Christian Woman and Bloody Kisses, A Death in the Family. Uh, then you got Too Late, Frozen, Blood and Fire, Can't Lose You, uh, Summer Breeze, which is a cover. Uh, set me on fire, suspended in dusk, which is what this version is referred to as, uh, and finally on side four, black number one, Little Miss Scarrow, which was like one of the big tracks that really launched them on uh, then MTV. Uh, and as far as this goes, you have some bonus photos that were never seen before, and almost like another gatefold here. You have. Uh, pictures information on the album itself and on the back you have this quote from uh pete Steele. so we'll let you take a look at that for a moment all right and uh you know one of the better albums from the drab floor as they're known as from uh, brooklyn new york always dug them you know they're still uh 
The other guys are still playing with the exception of Josh. Josh kind of hung it up. Josh Silver kind of hung it up after. But Kenny and um, Kenny and, uh, and Mr. Kelly are still out there doing what they do. Um, so definitely worth picking up. Big, big fan of Typo Negative. Always have been. Always will be. Um, rest in power, Peter Steele. Okay. Finally, we're going to get to this week's uh, most unusual of the bunch, you know, so we've had goth, we've had power metal, we've had kind of punkish stuff, and then, you know, posers trying to be respectable. Uh, now, this is about as weird as it gets, okay? Uh, really cool that this box set came out, and that is Mr. Bungle, quote, unquote, and it's got a foil cover on it, so you get some weird reflections there, and this is their first three albums uh, packaged in one. They're all, you know, beefed up to, to be on uh, uh, double albums. There are two unreleased tracks on this. Uh, we'll take a look at each of them. Uh, you know, have these all on CD. So glad that they've been put out on vinyl. Um, so this was the first one. And it's kind of hard to describe type, uh, excuse me, type one negative. Kind of hard to describe Mr. Bungle. It is basically like, um, Lunacy. I guess that would be the best word for it. It's just totally unhinged. They change genres several times, sometimes within the same song. Uh, it's challenging, you know, but once you reach that groove with them, you get the sense of humor in it that Mike Patton has, and it really is something cool to listen to if you can get into it. Um, you know, Mike Patton, known for Faith No More. This was his original band. I'll show you the back cover there. All right. Um, front cover again. I'll show you the gate. All right. Obviously, this has a lot to do with clowns. And there is like some sort of warped uh, carnival music and running throughout all their albums. Uh, it's very, you know, this one is probably uh, the most unhinged of the bunch. Uh, they're all, the albums themselves are basic black, really nothing to show you there. Uh, but this has some outstanding tracks on it. It kicks off with the box set title, quote unquote, uh, Slowly Growing Death, Squeeze Me Macaroni. Uh, then you have Carousel and then Egg, which is like beyond being out in left field. Uh, Stub a Dub, My Ass is on Fire. Uh, the Girls of Porn, Love is a Fist and Dead Goon. Uh, for me, the tracks that always stood out were Squeeze Me Macaroni, Girls of Porn, uh, My Ass Is On Fire, and Slowly Growing Death. So that's the uh, the first Mr. Bungle album. Now, Mr. Bungle was Mike Patton's first band. Uh, and, uh, you know, then, you know, they basically didn't get signed. Uh, and he brought them back after he got his contract uh, under Faith No More. Uh, and they released, uh, you know, three albums initially and then they disappeared for a while uh the second album that came out was this disco volante all right and uh this is uh you know it goes it starts off with every everyone i went to high school is dead which is basically like like crushing death metal uh and then as you go through the album all right uh you have stuff like chemical marriage carry stress on the jaw mind emissions which is a, a new track it's pretty cool um then you have the most bizarre dance song probably ever called Desert Search for the Techno Awa. Uh, you also have another oddball track. They're all oddball tracks. Uh, After School Special, then Phlegmatics, uh, and a bunch of other ones as well. Platypus. Uh, it is weird as weird gets. And once again, you know, this, this album really tends to, you know, have a lot of Zappa influences in there which I could probably credit Mr. Bungle for the reason why I like Frank Zappa now, because it opened my mind up to, you know, just really out there bizarro stuff. Uh, take a look at the, the back as well. And once again, with the, uh, the gatefold there, with all the uh, liner notes in there. No inserts or anything with this, this album uh, in particular. Uh, so you have that. The final one of the three, okay, is... California, okay, uh, and this one's, you know, along the line, just keep getting stranger and stranger as they went, uh, so you have California, uh, got some, you know, I'll give you all the track listing on this one, you got Sweet Charity, none of them knew they were robots, 
Retro Vertigo, The Air Conditioned Nightmare, Ars Moriendi, Pink Cigarette, Gollum 2, The Bionic Vapor Boy, uh, The Holy Filament, Vanity Fair, Goodbye Sober Day, and the unreleased tag, Nostereses. Uh, and take a look at the back there. You can see the, uh, the track listing and artwork. The interior, you know, with the uh, liner notes there. And once again, basic black vinyl. No inserts, nothing in this one as well. Um, you know, and then after this, this was released originally, I believe, in 99. Yeah, 99 this came out. So then there was like, you know, 16, 17, 18 year gap, however long it was. And they put out the album that's behind me here, The Raging Wrath of the Easter Bunny. Uh, different personnel, you know, got Scott Ian of Anthrax with the uh, his bionic forearm on, uh, on guitar. And uh, they basically redid the demo tape that Mike Patton was shopping around. Uh, and, you know, then they toured the album and they put out a live album of it as well. Um, so you have that. Once again, I'll show you the, the box, which reflects everywhere uh, with the killer clown there from the first album. Show you the back as well. You know, it's kind of hard to tell with all the reflective stuff on there, uh, but very cool. I was really, really psyched when I heard this was coming out because I uh, had no idea it was coming out. And then when I was like, holy shit, Mr. Bungle's putting out everything on vinyl. It's like, you got to scat that up as quick as I can. Um, so that is everything that I have to show for you this week. Um, you know, like I said, you know, new releases that are kind of re-releases, got some colorful stuff in there. Um, Thank you for checking out the channel. I really do appreciate it. Um, if you have a chance, drop a comment, give a thumbs up, share it with a friend. And if you haven't already, why in God's name haven't you subscribed to this channel? Uh, you know, Come back next week. Uh, Going to be looking at one of my all-time favorite trios and their big album that blew them up to the world, The Police, Synchronicity. Thank you so much for checking out the channel. As I always say, peace, one love, music, and I'm out.